Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, coming out of the Repairers of the Breach series. Yep, we're talking about feast days. In this class, we want to do a quick calculation on when the feast days are coming up, talking about the memorial of the blowing of trumpets, atonement day, and the feast of tabernacles 2019. All right, now you know how we do. We come over here to the U.S. Naval Observatory and we look at the fraction of the moon illuminated to determine when is the beginning of the year. Well, we do that in order so that we can know when the seventh month starts. Now, there's a lot of people who use stuff like grain harvest and wheat harvest and other unorthodox ways to determine when the year starts and they always end up um, or a lot of times they end up with their feast days falling differently than when they actually fall and I, I, I would say that the scripture never tells us to use barley harvest or feast harvest or any other type of grain harvest to determine when the feast days start it, or when the new moon starts or when the new year starts what it does tell us to do is to use the moons in relationship to the uh, to the springtime and and to determine when the year starts one thing we have to know about the sacred year, the holy year that starts in the spring is that just that, that it always starts in the spring. It never starts in the winter time. All right, so we come in here and we look. The first day of spring is for 2019 was March the 20th. Now, we always find that the new year begins sometime between March the 15th and April the 15th. So in order to, to determine when the new year starts, we have to find the new moon that falls between those dates. So looking over here at the U.S. Naval Observatory, we see that there was a new moon that fell on March the 5th. But that doesn't meet the criteria. So that won't be the new year. If if you go by that new moon, all of your feast days are going to be a month early. You have to find it between March the 15th and April the 15th. You see that there is a new moon that falls on April the 4th. So that would indicate the beginning of the year. Now, in order to find out when the fall feast start, we start counting from that new moon date and we see that there's a new moon on April the 4th and we could just count them there's one here all right I'm gonna try this feature in my little recording program I haven't used it before and I hope it don't get me in trouble but you have the you have one new moon there that'll be month one there's month two that will be the third month the fourth month would be there and we have to jump down here to find the fifth month oh messed up here's the fifth month right here all right notice that the fifth month here you have a new moon there and then you come down here and you have the sixth month here with the seventh month being here. So what we should find is that Rosh Hashanah, the memorial of the blowing of trumpets, should start fall sometime around the end of September. And when we come over to Google and put in for Rosh Hashanah uh, 2019, we come and we says that it's... Um, starts on the evening of September the 29th to uh, Tuesday October the 1st now we know that Rosh Hashanah the memorial blowing the trumpets is actually only one day so what day is it so in order to determine this we have to look a little bit closer now the reason why they the the, the Jewish people do this is because of the temple there in Jerusalem and some other business that goes on they they can change dates when they want to if it falls you know close to a, a Sunday or something like that they can move dates or whatever but you know we we don't really make those assumptions we look at Leviticus 23 and what it actually says and it actually says that it's only one day let's jump over there and look at that right quick you know, all of the feast days, you can find all of the holy feasts, the mandatory feasts are found in Leviticus 23. And you come all the way down here to verse 23 and you start hearing about the fall feast days. 
Let me read verse 24. He says, speaking to the children of Israel, saying in the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. OK, so notice that there aren't two days prescribed there. Um, like I said a few minutes ago, the Jewish people take some liberties that, you know, we don't we don't really succumb to we don't really you know go by we don't really take those liberties because it's a, we find in the scripture that it's extremely important to have these feasts on the day prescribed not the days we can't we don't have much leeway there so it's important to find out exactly what day it is all right so let's jump over here let's go back to the naval observatory and find out what day that is Okay, like I said, we've done several classes on how to determine the new moon date, which includes text from Enoch and includes text from the Dead Sea Scrolls. And we're not going to go into that into this class. However, I'm going to give you some links so you can look up that other stuff. But let me show you how we determine exactly when the new moon will fall in the seventh month. There's some criteria that it has to meet. The moon and the sun have to do a particular dance in order for it to be declared a new moon. All right. Now, first of all, we're going to start a little bit early. We're going to start back here on September the 27th, just so we can um, um, the same as as if you were to go out and start viewing the moon, which I suggest that you do. And I'm going to try to do so myself is actually go out there and lay my eyeballs on it myself. You'll start a few days early just to make sure that you are seeing um, the lack of a new moon. So so that when it does appear, you, you, you're confident that you're not late. All right. But I do use this U.S. Naval Observatory because, you know, it, it don't really have cloudy days and, and stuff like that. All right. So looking back here on September the 27th, you see that it is a 2 percent moon, but you see that it is waning crescent, meaning that it is getting smaller. All right. So this date, we know it's not it. But let's go on to the 28th. Now, another criteria is that the sun sets before the moon, because what they would do in the olden times is you would have the Levi's who represented the firstborn males of today. It would be the firstborn males who would do who would be the Levi's of today. Those individuals would have the responsibility of going out every month and viewing the new moon and what they would do. What they would have to do was wait to after the sun went down in order to give them enough time to see the new moon. So you have the sun setting at 638 p.m. and then you have the moon setting at 701 p.m. But again, you have to take into account that the, the dust time. It's still light outside at 702 and the moon has set at 701. So those individuals will not have an opportunity to see the new moon at all. They won't be able to visualize the, moon, the new moon because there's still light in the sky. All right. So let's go to the next day and notice down here that is not saying that any of the moon is illuminated down here in this area. All right. When we go to the 29th. We see that there is a 2% moon down here. We see that it is waxing crescent. So it should be able to see the the um, new moon there on the 29th. Now let's see if our criteria met, um, uh, is met. We see that the sun sets at 637 p.m. It gets dark at 7.01 p.m., but the moon is still in the sky at 7.40. Unlike the other day where the there was light in the sky when the moon went down, on this day, on the 29th, it will actually be dark when the moon sets. Therefore, they will be able to see the moon set and they would then make the announcement that this is actually the new moon. The new moon falls on this day. Now, there is another thing that you have to note about those priestly responsibilities. Knowing that the the day starts in the evening time, from evening to evening is when the day starts. What they would do and what we still do, those, uh, those Levites who do this today, when we do notice that there is a new moon, we start to blow the trumpets. And what that means is some of us do it uh, literally, some of us do it symbolically, some of us do it both. You know, I, I 
tend to try to make announcements. I may call people, let people know. But what that is, but the purpose of it is we're letting people know that the new moon has been verified. And this lets people know that the Sabbath days are now changing, that the month has now changed. All right. And what would happen is, is when the new moon is verified this evening on the 29th, that would actually start the first day of the month. Let me repeat that on the evening of the 29th would start the first day of the month. So the the first day of the month starts on the evening of the 29th and it ends on the evening of the 30th. All right. So let's come back over to Google and see what they have to say. And yeah, they say the same thing is that the Rosh Hashanah starts on the evening of the 29th and then it would end on a 30th. And you see they've added this extra day in here. And like we say, we don't we don't really go by that extra day. They do it every year. They do it almost. I believe they do it on every feast. They add an extra day there. And, you know, there may be people who follow that who would actually be celebrating their holy feast days on a different day. And that's not really allowed by scripture at all. All right. So this verifies that. And, and well, this this is a clear indication that the uh, memorial of blowing of trumpets will be on um uh, it will start on Sunday the 29th and you will actually blow your trumpet since it is the memorial of blowing of trumpets. Unlike a regular new moon um, um, verification day when they would only really blow it that night, that evening when they verified it. Since this is the memorial of blowing of trumpets, you would actually blow the trumpets on Monday. You would actually blow the trumpets all Monday, which would actually be the first day of the month. All right. So that's important to write down is that Monday, the 30th is the first day of the seventh month. Monday, the 30th is the first day of the seventh month. All right. That is the memorial of blowing of trumpets. All right. So let's come back over here. So Monday, the 30th would actually be the first day of the month here. So you start counting one. This will be day two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The day of atonement will be October the ninth. It would start the evening of the eighth. But the full day that you will celebrate the Day of Atonement will be on the 9th. All right. So let's go to Google and see what Google has to say about that. Not that we verify anything. Google just gives you a good idea. But the thing is, they could be wrong. They could be wrong. You have to check. Not, not that it's Google's fault. They're getting their information from those Sanhedrin or whoever it is that's running the Jewish world. And those guys can give them um foul information that they'll tell everybody all right so coming over here it says that Yom Kippur or the day of atonement starts on the evening of October the 8th and goes through Wednesday October the 9th now I said earlier that they always give you two days they didn't give you two days on this one notice on this one they narrowed it down to only one 24 hour period and it lines up with what we've calculated all right I'm glad to see that secondary confirmation. All right. So the Day of Atonement has been well, the Day of Atonement, which, you know, is subject to actually going out and viewing the new moon for ourselves, of course. But we can be relatively sure, you know, that it's going to be on October the 8th, starting the evening of October the 8th and going through the evening of October the 9th. All right. If they got that one right, we can almost assume that they've gotten um, tabernacles right. So let's look at it. They have October the 13th. Wait, did they give us one day or two days? And it's hard to tell in here because our, um, the thing about um, 
um, Sukkot or the or Tabernacles is that it is a week long feast. So now they got on Rosh Hashanah on uh, the memorial blowing the trumpets. They got it on the if they, they got it on this day right. Um, on this one they got it the first day right. So let's see if they got this one on the first day right on the 13th. All right, so if this is day 10 right here on October the 9th, that's day 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, it would actually be right. Because remember that this is this is the day-long celebration. On the 14th is when you are waking up celebrating, and you're going to be celebrating until the sun goes down on the 14th. But remember, it actually started the evening before. It actually starts on the 13th. So, praise the Lord, Google has it right this year. And this can give us some confidence, you know, because like we said earlier, there's a lot of people who are using barley harvest and using other non-biblical um, um, criteria to determine when the feast days are and you know I believe this year they're off by a whole month you know they're celebrating these days a whole month early and you know the, the, our father in heaven he doesn't really play tricks on us like that guys when you have a small group of people using non-biblical criteria to determine the the um, feast days and somehow getting it right while the rest of the world are who are using the scripture are somehow getting it wrong you, that 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 wouldn't you know that that's not the way our father you know does things he, he isn't out trying to trick us by any means um so we can rest assured that these are the dates here during this season guys we tend to put out several classes some dealing with the rules of the the feast days some dealing with the timing of feast days and uh, um classes dealing with the the uh scripture associated with feast days and and other things we put out so go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so so you can get these classes when we when they come out all right with that shalom